What's up everyone, Tristan Parker here and today I am so buzzed to share with you a new five part tutorial series that I'm putting together that will allow you to go from absolutely nothing all the way through to producing a very professional looking website and you're going to have all of the design decisions to back up everything that you've done. If you guys haven't done so already, I recommend hitting that subscribe button and then you'll get all of the future releases coming to you as well. So we're gonna split this tutorial into five parts and we're gonna start with the planning. And this is gonna cover defining all of our website pages and what our website page structure is going to look like. Once we've done that, we're gonna head over to start the wireframing stage and get in that initial sort of structured layout that we need for our website. In the third episode, we're gonna be looking at putting together a website style guide. So this is where we start defining our brand colors, the images and the type of typography that we wanna be using. Once we've got our website style guide and we have made all of our design decisions, we're then gonna easily move into part four. And this will be where we start actually designing our website. For many, part four is the fun part and actually the part that most people start with, which is actually a little bit silly because that's when mistakes tend to happen. Once we've taken care of everything that we need to and we have our final professional designed looking website, we are then gonna move on to part five, which is the prototyping. Now this part is going to, let's say, add some very nice life to your designs and it's gonna allow you to produce some clickable elements. Basically, you'll end up with a design that you can interact with and if you are sending it to a client or you are sending it to a web developer this process and this step is really important because it helps you articulate all of your design decisions and you'll end up with a product that you are happy with. So this five part series is actually gonna be really good for people starting out in the web design industry. I actually believe it's probably gonna be pretty beneficial for those that have already started their web design journey or are actually established as a web designer because if you're anything like me, I love seeing other people's processes and if you guys want a real insight into my process, then I recommend that you stick around and watch all of the five episodes and who knows, you might learn something. I'm actually gonna be basing this project on the Web Design Life website, which is the YouTube channel. I haven't had a chance to put this together yet, so I thought this is actually a great opportunity to do so. That said, I know it's quite a small scale project, but the information that I'm about to share with you over this series will essentially set you up to tackle any website project of any size. We're actually gonna jump straight into step one today and start our planning stage for the website project. Now I am using an iPad and a pencil to sketch stuff out, but you guys can follow along with pen and paper if you wish. I'm using an app called Concepts and it's great, it's free, and it pretty much gives me like a complete open canvas for me to draw things and write things down. So I absolutely recommend that. First thing that we're gonna wanna do here is outline the pages that we are gonna need for our website. So we always start off with home. That's obviously a given. Now I've got my pages, obviously there is the home page, which is uh, pretty standard. Then we've got about, which will just be information about us. And the inspiration section for the Web Design Life website is essentially an area which I want all of the things that I find inspiring and I wanna be able to share that with you guys. So that's what that section is about. The Web Design Life is probably gonna be a link off to YouTube or I might look to embed the videos into the site. I'm not quite sure yet. And then obviously you've got a contact page. Now, depending on your client, the chances are that you will work with them to help them figure out what pages that they need for their website. Or in other circumstances, your client might have already decided what pages that they need and also supply the content. But for the purpose of this project, I am my own client and I have a rough idea of what pages that I'm going to need on this website. Now we've got our pages, we're gonna then move over to the like website structure. And by this, I mean, do you know when you see a sort of website structure type diagram where you have the home page at the top and then you have all of the other pages sort of branching underneath? Kind of looks a bit like an upside down fork. That is what we refer to as a web page hierarchy or otherwise known as information architecture where you define what and where the content goes on your website so the user can help find it easily. Now, like I say, the home page is going to be right at the top and then these other pages are gonna sit underneath. 
So there you go, there's an example of a really basic site structure. And in this situation, because the project is pretty small, we don't actually have any pages to sit underneath our parent pages. But if your project was bigger and you had something like, let's say you had a team page, then you might start branching off the about section and you would put something like team. Makes sense. And with that in mind, you will then start sort of seeing a structure. And this is actually how website URLs are structured as well. So for example, if we wanted to get to the about page, so that there will take you to this about section. Now, if you wanted to jump down into the team, you would then put forward slash team. So there you go. You can hopefully start to appreciate how websites are structured. One really important thing to consider when putting together a website structure and organizing your web pages is to not place any of the pages where you wouldn't expect to see them. Now, what do I mean by this? So let's just take the contact page, for example. You wouldn't actually expect to see, like, let's say you have some projects, you wouldn't place projects underneath the contact section because naturally when you're visiting a website, you wouldn't go to the contact page first to try and find information on products or projects. And that applies the same because we are always trying to deliver a great user experience for everyone visiting the website. So absolutely do bear that in mind. In addition to the site structure that I've got here, I'm, I wanna add some social links. Now these are gonna be links that link off to the social media platforms, but I'm absolutely gonna make a separate note to them here. So we've got Instagram, Dribbble, YouTube, and uh, a mailing list. So I have kept these separate because they don't really affect the structure of the site as such, but I just wanna make note of them because they are gonna be linking off to other places. So there you have that. That's how I tend to approach the planning stage of a web design project when it comes to outlining the pages and the site structure. Now, if you guys have any questions about how you can go about building your own site structure, then honestly drop me a comment down below remember this is a five part series so if you haven't done so already remember to hit that subscribe button and hit the bell if you want to be alerted for the following videos that are to come and if you've enjoyed this or hopefully you've taken something away from this then honestly give it a thumbs up i'd really appreciate that next up in the second part we've got the wireframing session so hopefully guys i will catch you in the next one